Are you familiar with the names Natalie Holloway, Lacey Peterson, and Chandra Levy? And then wondered why pretty white girls are the only women who ever go missing? You wouldn't be to blame for thinking that since that's exactly the impression promoted by our national media. So let's discuss missing white girl syndrome. We're not breaking new ground here. This is a topic many of you might already be familiar with, but I feel it's good to be reminded of this form of racial discrimination to expand our awareness of the issue. I'm your host Atten here at Atten Paranormal, where I cover paranormal investigation, true crime, and mental health topics. Today, we're discussing missing white girl syndrome. This term is used to describe the phenomenon where there is disproportionate media coverage and public attention given to cases involving missing young white females compared to cases involving missing individuals of other races or genders. The label was first used in the 1990s to describe extensive media coverage given to the cases of missing young white women, such as Polly Klaus and Amber Hagerman, while cases involving missing people of color received relatively little attention. The term has also been used to criticize the media for ignoring or downplaying cases involving missing people of color and for perpetuating racial stereotypes. Prominent examples I'm sure everyone living in North America are aware of include Natalie Holloway, a white teenager who disappeared while on a trip to Aruba in 2005. Her case received extensive media coverage and a made-for-TV movie. Jean Benet Ramsey, a young white girl who was found dead in her family home in 1996. The case received widespread media attention and even now, many years later, continues to be the subject of documentaries and true crime podcasts, and the 2008 disappearance and murder of Kaylee Anthony, a white toddler who was later found dead. The circumstances surrounding Kaylee's murder and high-profile trial has received extensive media coverage. More recently, there was the murder of Gabby Petito, a young white woman who went missing during a cross-country road trip with a vile, abusive coward who murdered her before he himself took his own pathetic life. To remind us what a piece of garbage he was, his suicide note claimed he killed her out of compassion, that she hurt her ankle and couldn't continue hiking. No, really. Those four tragic examples are terrible on their own, but they also serve as unfortunate reminders regarding the extensive media coverage given to missing young white females. Meanwhile, cases involving missing women and girls of color receive relatively little attention. So either women of color just never go missing and are rarely if ever murdered, or there's something going on with the media coverage of these events and crimes. One of the main factors is the fact that media outlets are more likely to cover cases involving missing white females because they are considered to be more newsworthy or interesting to a majority white audience. The shareholders think there's more profit in talking about missing pretty young white girls than women of color. I wonder if this bias could be linked to data from a 2018 diversity survey conducted by the American Society of News Editors, which determined newsrooms tend to be predominantly white and male. Additionally, the stereotype of an innocent white woman and the predatory non-white male that are often perpetuated in the media contributes to the disproportionate attention given to such cases. One myth suggests this disparity is because white women are more likely to be reported missing than people of color. However, this would be inaccurate. In fact, people of color, especially black and indigenous women, are underrepresented in missing persons reports, and often their cases are not taken as seriously by law enforcement and media. This is due to undeniable systemic racism and bias that exists in our criminal justice system and media. A study conducted by the Black and Missing Foundation found that while African Americans make up 13% of the population, they account for 34% of missing persons cases. A 2017 study by the Urban Indian Health Institute found that of the 5,712 cases of missing Native American and Alaskan Native women and girls from 2016, only 116 were logged in the federal database. In 2022, over half a million persons were reported missing. Nearly 40% were people of color. Yet African Americans make up only 13% of the U.S. population. And many minority children are initially classified as runaways, which means they do not receive an Amber Alert. Another statistic suggests many families of missing people of color 
do not report their loved ones missing for fear of not being taken seriously by law enforcement or fear of being treated as suspects in the case, which is another result of racism in the U.S. criminal justice system. Some may refuse to acknowledge racism. However, there are a number of statistics and data points that can be used to demonstrate the existence of systemic racism in our criminal justice system. Some examples include African Americans are arrested at a rate that is 2.5 times higher than that of whites. African Americans are nearly three times more likely to be killed by the police than whites. Black Americans are nearly four times more likely to be killed by the police than white Americans. African Americans are disproportionately represented in the prison population, accounting for 33% of the total prison population, despite, as we have mentioned, only making up 13% of the U.S. population. African Americans are sentenced to longer prison terms than whites for the same crimes. African Americans and other minorities are more likely to be targeted by police during traffic stops and are more likely to be searched, ticketed, or arrested as a result. Now, if you spend a little time on Reddit, you'll find racists that claim these statistics don't prove racism. Racists will argue that minorities commit more crimes than white people. However, that ignorant, hateful assertion is not supported by the evidence. Studies have shown that there is no inherent difference in criminal behavior among different racial groups, but rather that racial disparities in the criminal justice system are a result of systemic and institutional racism. For example, research has shown that people of color are more likely to be arrested, charged, and convicted for the same crimes as white people because of racial bias. Studies have found that black defendants are more likely to be charged with crimes carrying mandatory minimum sentences and are more likely to be denied bail than white defendants. Additionally, research has shown that people of color are more likely to be stopped, searched, and arrested by the police, even though they are not more likely to be in possession of contraband than Caucasians. This is because of racial profiling, which is the practice of targeting people of color for police stops and searches based on their race or ethnicity, rather than any reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. Many experts believe that these disparities are the result of implicit bias, which is unconscious, subtle, and sometimes unintended discrimination. Therefore, it's not enough to simply say we aren't racist. It's not enough to not be racist. We must be aggressively anti-racist. So long as any of us are unsafe, all of us are unsafe, regardless of skin color, gender, education, and economic standing. All of the disparities we have discussed here have real-world consequences. People of color who are disproportionately represented in the criminal justice system are more likely to be denied jobs, denied housing, denied other opportunities, which can lead to a cycle of poverty and disadvantage. Every person is an important person. Every man, woman, and child from every ethnic background is equal, and their lives are all just as valuable. It is important that we recognize the role media and society play in perpetuating these negative stereotypes. I hope this topic has been a reminder that we can all do more to be understanding of and resistant to racial and gender bias prejudice within our society. Thank you for watching, and thank you for showing your support by liking the video and letting me know in the comments anything else that is important to the topic. Thanks and many blessings to you always. I hope to see you in the next video.